even if it's just rudimentary. As everyone knows, sounds are transmitted better through solid bodies or through water than through air. In water, sound vibrations can travel over great distances. Many animals emit and receive sounds underwater, but cetaceans are the real kings of subaquatic telecommunication. The complicated low-frequency singing of some whales can be detected at a distance of more than 500 miles. Their voices, the strongest on the planet, allow them to communicate among themselves, resounding from coast to coast in the ocean. At times, these infrasounds register intensities close to 190 decibels. It is thought that the sperm whale hunts giant squid using ultrasound. But the strength of the cetacean's emission comes from the basic function they have of communicating in a liquid medium. As a means of measuring the degree of intelligence of whales or dolphins, it has sometimes been suggested that graphs of their sound waves be compared, as recorded by computer, with those of the human voice. The graphic reflection of the acoustic waves of these marine mammals is even more complex than ours, so that according to this theory, either they are more intelligent or the distortion of the water is to blame. To record sounds traveling through air, it is very important to have parabolas that amplify and select the broadcast signal. Whales do not have auditory pavilions or outer ears, probably for hydrodynamic reasons, but outside of the water, a good screen with a concave shape helps the sound to be received better. In addition, the designs of the auditory pavilions of animals allow them to identify with precision where each sound comes from from above or below, from the right or the left. This is essential in order to know which way to go in order to escape. The mobility of these parabolas is directly proportional to each species need to hear. Some can orient their ears quickly and exactly to the point from which the sound is coming. That's a great evolutionary advantage which man must do manually and which gives us a strange appearance. But by directing two antennae towards the same place, one furthermore obtains a third coordinate, the distance at which the sound is produced, that is, listening in stereo. For that reason, everyone has two ears. This coyote is looking for mice that move stealthily under the snow. It can't see them, but it knows exactly where they are. Stealth is a constant in nature although there are exceptions. Few zoological encounters are noisier than a flock of cranes at dawn. Cranes are very gregarious and sociable. They seek refuge in numbers. The flocks sleep, eat, and move about together. They don't stop yelling at each other, even in flight. Certainly the noise from their long necks makes them feel that they are surrounded by many of their kind, and so they feel safer. Their shouting also has another objective. 
They mark their position while they move. This flock is about to migrate. The cold mornings of winter will soon give way to spring. And so for the cranes, it is time to go north. Their squawking helps them stay together in formation during the long trip. The idea of the cranes emitting acoustic signals to establish a reference in space is also used by man. We are able to fly airplanes in formation in part because of this invention of acoustic markers. Although we have never been able to coordinate such numerous squadrons, It's a matter of emitting short and continuous sounds like those made by the cranes. Otherwise, the sound could be heard, but it would be more difficult to find exactly where it's coming from. This is what happens with the cicadas. Their deafening chirping hides the branch from which they emit it very well. That is, as long as the creature listening is not another cicada. These sonorous insects are an unfailing presence on hot, dry days. Their music is well known, and there are hundreds of different species throughout the world, each one singing in its own way. But hearing them is not the same as seeing them. Very few people have ever seen them. They are cryptic animals. That's to say, their color camouflages them well in their surroundings. And when they sing, one hardly notices that they're doing so. It seems as though they aren't moving a single muscle. How do they make their melody? The generally accepted idea is that cicadas, like crickets, rub their wings together and the nerves of the transparent elytrums act like the strings of an untuned violin. But this is not true. The mechanism by which the cicada produces its potent roar is hidden precisely under the wings. An undulated membrane is rubbed with a very hard mobile appendage. The tension of this membrane and the pressure the insect exerts with its drumstick do the rest. In fact, before composing rhythms to enliven our dances, drums were used to send messages. It was the tam-tam language. Woodpeckers have used it for millions of years. They also are very shy animals and are very difficult to observe except during the period of their infancy. Their drumming gives them away. Their powerful beak helps them to look for worms in the wood, to make holes in tree trunks, to taste the sap, and of course, to build their nests. They work on trees like a chisel, opening holes, perforating them, and drilling them. With each impact, their brain is subjected to a deceleration unbearable for any other animal. It doesn't affect them, however. Furthermore, the sound they produce when working has ended up becoming part of their language. With it, they delimit their territories or send messages to their partners. Within their thick forests, the noise of their tam-tam travels perfectly through the vegetation to distances of more than 10 miles. On the jungle floor, there is someone who also uses percussion as a language, although its rhythm is almost imperceptible. It's thought of as a secret code, and it's not perceived with the ears. 
The vibrations are not transmitted by air, but rather by land. The ends of the legs of these tarantulas are hypersensitive and are equipped to interpret such subtle messages. At this moment, they are messages of love.